Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. We're still going full bore on this on this Evo motor. Full bore. We're going slow and that's the reality of it. I've been busy but we've got this thing just about ready to go. I've got the cylinders all almost done and we'll probably do them in the next video. Um, but right now what we're going to do is we're going to plug some holes. I mean any holes we can plug need to be plugged. So I'm going to start by putting the timing plug in. That's a real big deal. It doesn't require an O-ring or anything. And the last thing you want to do is Loctite it in. Because this thing, you have to take out every once in a while for timing. Okay, timing plug is installed. Okay, what else? I think to make sure I don't drop anything in it. Now I washed, I think I'm going to put the tappet screen in. Now this, this, what this does is this filters the oil that go to your lifters. Now with hydraulic lifters that's very important because you don't want any kind of debris to get into them. And personally I always tell people every time you change your oil that's a good time to pull that screen and clean it. And so here is the little screen all washed and ready to go. Here's the spring that holds it in. And there it is. And it's got a nice new O-ring on the cap. This is an aftermarket cap that somebody put on it. Nothing wrong with that. And we'll just uh, put it on there. And there it is. That was kind of easy and nice. Clunk. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to install the lifters and the lifter blocks. Now, I had two motors and I'm using the best parts of both of them. Now, we showed lifters before and we've shown them on shovel heads. What you want to do is make sure you have a nice fit. Now when I say a nice fit, that means they're not rocking around too much. There is a spec, but these feel pretty good. The big deal with lifters is the roller. You want to make sure there's no up and down movement in that roller. Any up and down movement you feel in that thing Actually, that's just a little movement this week. Next week, it'll be a lot of movement, and all the little needle roller bearings that are in there will be all through your motor. So you want to be sure that you check those. Okay, this is a front. This is a rear. Like I said, I've already checked all this stuff. So I'm going to put some assembly lube on everything. When I say on everything, what I'm talking about is the surface, the outer surface of the, of the lifter. And then on the roller, I want assembly lube because it's going to be rubbing on the cam. Okay. So now we've got the roller done. And the surface here. Okay. And there they are in place. Need something here to wipe my hands off. Okay. Now we're going to need a gasket. And that's not the right one. So it must be this one. And there it is. Now, in installing this, this is not too hard. The big important thing, and I want to make sure the camera sees this, is when I put this gasket on, I was lining up for the four holes here and the oil hole right here. Now, that oil hole lines up with the oil hole right here on the crankcase. Okay, so when we put that in place, Make sure that hole lines up. Now, 
I usually put on the rear one the easy way with my fingers in here and just set everything down nice and easy. When we get to the front one, we won't be able to put our fingers in there, so it'll be a little different. Now, they make an alignment tool. I know everybody likes the tools that I show. And these are tools that are made for aligning lifter blocks. And I think most people use one. That's what they, they show is one. I use two. Um, because that really lines it up real well, for one thing. Let me get a wrench for it. And for another thing, I just happen to have two, so why not? Spoil myself rotten. So there we go. Lifter block is now in place. That's pretty wonderful. And we know that it's located well. Now, I didn't, I don't think I brought a flashlight out here. But if I did, you could see that those rollers are lined up real well. Thank you, Mike. There's my flashlight. I don't know if the camera can pick that up real well or not. But what it shows is how well the lifters are lined up on the cam. And there it is. Now we're going to make sure those screws are down there snug. We're just going to snug the tool up. Yeah, it's a tapered bolt tool that locates the lifter block. Okay, there they are in place. And I'm going to put a couple of the screws in. I like the original 12 bolt screws. Now this particular set is not chrome, and I put a lot of chrome ones in, but I just like the 12 points. They're really nice. And we're going to put these in real quick and easy. This little quarter drive set makes it real easy. Notice I started them with my fingers to make sure I wasn't cross-threading them or anything. And all these holes have been cleaned out. Okay, now once we get these bolts snugged, just snug. Then we can take the tool out, tools, since I'm using two of them. And yes, I do see that the chrome on this lifter block is ugly. I told Bobby and he said he didn't mind, so there it is. It's ugly. Okay. Now we know we have perfect alignment. having used those tools. Okay. Now we get the other two bolts in. Ratchets will do that once you get them good and worn in. I have ratchets. I've actually worn the gears out and had replaced a couple of times. Okay, now what we're going to do
is we're going to torque those bolts. Now the book calls out 12 to 15 foot-pounds, which to me means about 150 inch-pounds. Now we'll sneak up on them a little bit, but I've got this torque wrench set for 150 inch-pounds. See, 12 foot-pounds would be 144 inch-pounds. So doing this at 150 inch-pounds will make it just right. Not too loose, not too tight. Just right. Okay, now there's the rear lifter block. Now doing the front one is a little different. And this calls for another one of my cool tools. I've been getting a lot of comments on my tools. Where do you get them? These are common tools that you can find in uh, it's about all the major suppliers have them. And uh, you know it's hard to justify the expense unless you're going to do this a lot. And I did it a lot for a long time, and I was able to justify the expense of those neat tools. And truthfully, I'm a tool freak. I probably would have bought them anyway. Might have had a little trouble justifying them. And I don't have a wife that I have to justify them to. Not that there's anything wrong with wives. <laughs> I didn't mean to say anything rude. Because I sure don't think so. I like girls. Okay, now. Let's see. We're going to put this gasket on here. And it fit perfectly. Now what we're going to do is use this again this cool tool so the, the lifter block is going to go on like that and that tool is going to hold the lifters here's the other one it's a magnetic tool and it's going to hold those lifters in place as we put the lifter block right where we want it and once it's down you can put the tools in first. If I want to, I can even take it out again and look at it and make sure I got that hole right. Don't ever want to forget to line that hole up there. We've got it. Like I said, this is a pretty routine job, but if you get it wrong, it's no longer routine. So we're going to put this, uh, this here tool in. One there. Again, I like to use two. I don't think these things were real expensive. I honestly don't remember. It's been a long time. They didn't come out with this tool for aligning lifter blocks until the Evo motor came out. So that means sometime after 1984. Okay. Now that we know everything is lined up perfectly because of these alignment tools, we can, if we like, remove the magnet that's holding these lifters in place. Look at that. Not only that, but it lifted the lifters so we know everything in there is happy. God knows we like happy. 
So that's it. Um, I've already torqued down the uh, rear lifter block. Now I'm going to torque down the front one. I don't think you need the repetition of me doing both of them. So next time we work on this motor, I mean, I'll finish this up here now, but next time we work on this motor, we're going to, you know what? I can do one more thing. One more thing. I have the oil sending unit. This is the one that works that wonderful little idiot light. Probably shouldn't call it an idiot light, but I like those lights. I think they work pretty well. Maybe I'm an idiot. But anyway, we're going to put the sending unit for the oil light, which I think is a wonderful accessory. It's not really an accessory, but it's a wonderful thing because what it does is it shows you that you have oil pressure or circulation. You're not really concerned with the amount of pressure. You just want to be at circulating. Be sure that it's circulating. Okay. So we're going to tighten this in place. And then other than me finishing up this front lifter block, I think we're done for now. And next time we'll be what we're going to do is we're going to check the rings for fit before we install them. I'm trying to take all these details into account. Everybody knows how to put in a set of rings, but we need to check them for their proper end gaps and all that. So we're going to go over that in the next video. So until then, I'll see you out on the road.